what's been proven so valuable to military forces is that a small drone that's small enough to be backpack portable and light enough to, you know, to, to, to be carried by a, a soldier can go anywhere with that unit. And it's an organic sensor that they own that they can deploy uh, quickly uh, at, at the time and place they need it to get the information. Having the ability to uh, make better decisions on a battlefield is key. Our overall brief was just to make our drone products better in every way possible from our, our past generations. Having to carry around a giant aircraft would be prohibitive in a lot of use cases, and so size ends up being really, really important. It also ends up being very difficult, like making something that's super capable and very dense from a feature perspective is also really hard to make small at the same time. We've been able to incorporate all of these features into an overall product that's only four and a half pounds, which is just awesome. Every square millimeter, every cubic millimeter really ends up mattering. You end up fighting for those in order to make the product really elegant and small. So the challenge in designing drones is you want to make them as lightweight as possible. Any extra size is not, not only like extra material that, you're, that customers are going to have to carry around, that you're going to have to build into the case, but also the, the mass. So you want everything small, you want it dense. And that goes down to like on the component level, you like take our main logic board, everything is incredibly dense on here. We've been doing this daily, so you take a cross section of the drone, look inside, where is there wasted space? How could we move around components, interfaces, circuit boards such that we can take advantage of that wasted space. We have a lot of high power electronics inside. Like that's what enables the autonomy system, that's what enables the radio to work really well, the cameras to work really well, and as a side effect of that, there's a bunch of heat that's generated. So in this case, we have about 40 watts of heat that has to be cooled, which is a substantial amount. And so part of the design of the core structure is how do we remove that heat from the system as efficiently as possible. We intentionally decided to go with a three-bladed propeller again this time, similar to X2. The three blades will slow down the rotor rate quite a bit and reduce the overall noise footprint. And we know that's important to a lot of our customers. In terms of durability, we've chosen a few design features to enable this to be a rugged like enterprise product. For material selection on previous products, we chose magnesium and unfilled polycarbonates. On this program, we chose glass-filled and carbon-filled to increase the stiffness of the system. Um, without taking on an extra weight. Our arm structure is an ultrasonic welded assembly, and so we're able to basically fasten two pieces of arm material together in a continuous way around the length of the arm without using screws or snaps or other things. So it makes the arms really strong and really light uh, and really robust in general, and that's a new, new process for us on this product. These things are gonna be used and abused. You know, they're thrown in backpacks, they're you know, dropped off tables. We wanna make sure that we're future-proofing all of these designs and validating them to how they will be used, not necessarily to just how they're being used today. We use large-scale thermal chambers so that we can fly in hot and cold temperatures. We use these vibration tables to validate a lot of our really vibration-sensitive electronics. We have also developed in-house what we call our wind wall to simulate the highest degree of winds that we expect. We have water cycling rigs to kind of catch all of those edge cases of how these might be used by customers. So Skydio is a bit different in our development process from some competitors where we do a lot of the development in-house, so the design, the engineering, we do all of our reliability testing in-house. We're able to iterate more quickly and ensure reliable and efficient products that way. When you look at the team, the product design team, we're just excited to come to work every day. I think it's special to work at a place like that, and that shows off in our products. There's detail because there's ownership in the parts we're designing. So with X10, I think the customers should really be able to just achieve all that they need to do in their day-to-day -day work easier essentially. It should be more efficient, it should be easier for them to move the product around, to use their product. They should be able to do whatever they need to do in their use cases with X10.